Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how I can afford to travel, and I guess the bigger question is how can you do so as well? Good morning guys to Ubud, Bali. I have wandered my way into Tagalog rice terraces. I actually haven't been here for literally over a year and um, it just, it looks like there's literally nobody here besides me and the farmers out here. It's like seven o'clock in the morning, super early. But uh, they've actually closed off a lot of the entrances here to the rice terrace. So there's really not many ways to get in. Um, and the fields are really overgrown, so there's really not many paths to go down making your way to the actual rice fields. But in today's video, guys, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I afford to travel. Because I've been getting that question quite a lot on YouTube and Instagram, and I just figured it'd be easier to make a video about it. So just to give you guys a bit of background, I started traveling back in 2018, really, um, when I moved from the United States to Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And the goal for me there was to live abroad for at least a year. And uh, the way I was gonna make money and fund my travels was through English teaching. Now, English teaching is such a popular way to fund your travels that it's really nothing new. Now, moving to Vietnam, I had no English teaching experience. All I had was my bachelor's degree and, um, and some money in my pocket. And how much you ask? Well, it's about $2,500 for <laughs> yeah, there's, it literally was not quite that much and if there's anything I would do differently It would be to bring more money now luckily I found a job pretty quickly um, I'm not gonna get too much into the requirements of English teaching But um if you are interested to know how I did it and what you need to do to uh, teach English abroad You can just message me down on Instagram and I will do my best to answer your questions now I taught students from ages four years old in kindergarten all the way up to adults about 50 years old. So I taught literally just about everybody. And it, teaching English in Asia, you can make quite a bit of money, anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000 a month, if not more, depending on how many hours you work and what school you're teaching at. Now, there did come a point where I was getting pretty exhausted in Vietnam with teaching English constantly. And it's really not a flexible way of um, funding your travels because you're basically working five, six times a week or however much it may be. And um, you can only travel so far within those two days that you have off. So by the end of 2018, I had switched over to online teaching where I was teaching now, instead of Vietnamese students, I was teaching Chinese students online. And the pay is just about the same. You just have to put a little more effort into teaching online because uh, you don't have that physical interaction with students. So by the end of 2018, I had moved to Bali, Indonesia, where I am now. And uh, I was teaching English online from a laptop. And the great thing about teaching online is that it, it's very flexible. You can teach as little hours as you want to, or you can teach as many hours as you want to. And uh, the great thing is that you can do it from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection. Now that is the only stressful part about teaching online is that you constantly have to have an internet connection. Which now brings me to the beginning of 2020 where by March I had left Bali back home to the United States and I was starting to slow down on English teaching because I was getting to a point where I didn't want to rely on internet, didn't want to rely on English teaching as a source of income to travel. And so I did what I did best, which is doing videography and video editing. I had quite a bit of clients that I've worked with in the past and I basically found as many jobs as I could of video editing and doing videography work. And I literally just saved all that money so that I could start traveling full time in September and not have to worry about a job at all. All right, I'm gonna try to move my way down the rice field a little bit. See, because there's no tourists, all the grass is just overgrown and uh, it's a little harder to see the pathways now. Wow. Another way to stretch out your savings so that you can travel a lot longer is doing brand deals and collaborations. I've done quite a few collaborations in the past when I traveled and it's a great way to find free accommodation and uh, basically free food as well in exchange for your services, whether that may be photography, videography, which it was for me, or it could be marketing, social media, or even website design. I've heard people doing that as well. But as somebody that's traveled quite a bit, accommodation cost is really your, your biggest expense when traveling. 
um, in addition to your food. So if you can collaborate with somebody where you can knock off that expense, it's gonna really help you out in the long run. Now I think the next two are, are probably one of the most important. And that's gonna be not only just saving your money and, and using your savings as much as possible, but also keeping track of your spending. Let me just uh, move my way over here. Cause uh, I've literally run out of paths to walk here, or at least I can't see them anymore. So one of the things I've started to do is keeping track of my money. And that's really helped me to stay on budget uh, when traveling because I can really stretch out my money for the entire year that I planned it for. And I feel like if you don't do that, you're really just gonna blow through your money pretty quickly. And then six months later, you're gonna be wondering where all your money went. Now one of the things I've recently started doing is affiliate links as well. So basically I create a link to a product or a service and if anybody clicks that link because I recommended it to them, then I get a small commission out of it, which is very tiny, but in the long term, it really adds up to uh, quite a bit of money. And uh, wow, I think I'm lost now. <laughs> I think I need to turn around now. It's really hard to tell where I'm going and if there's a path or not. Honestly, I don't know how the farmers do it here. Picking the rice here in the hot sun. By the way guys, if you aren't familiar with Ubud, which is where I'm currently at, it's a very central part of Bali, and uh, most people come out here because it's just so quiet out here. There are so many rice fields. I mean, it's, it's so green, it's so beautiful. And if you're wondering what it's currently like with no tourists, well, it's literally just that. There's no tourists. So everything is, uh, well, it's a little harder to find stuff open. And in my opinion, there's really not much to do here, which is why I do end up staying in, um, in the Changu area. But I do have several plans at the beginning of January 2021 to come up here for, um, for a week. Gonna be um, staying at several really cool Airbnbs and doing a few adventure activities that I've never done before. And uh, I'm really surprised because most people have done just about everything there is to do in uh, Bali. So it's pretty unique and uh, interesting that I found something that nobody's really done yet. I mean, look at this, you can't even see where you're walking. But if you guys found this video helpful, please give it a like, comment down below any questions about how to fund your travels. You can always DM me on Instagram and I'll do my best to answer them. And of course guys, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.